Well, let's uh, let's talk a little bit about this um, uh, abortion stuff because I think uh, we're going to. Um, I think this is. I, I just have a sense that this is going to come back. And Brendan was telling me that he thinks I'm just having like PTSD from uh, from the Bush years, but. Um, I, that should be your, mem- your I, autobiography. Yeah, I've got like PhD three of them. from the Bush years. Um, Sam Cedar. I, I, <laughs> and Janine Garofalo. It, yeah, yeah. It, it just With a forward <laughs> and afterward by exactly. Janine Garofalo. <laughs> it just, <laughs> it, just it, it, it just seems to me that um, Trump is desperate to find something right now that is going to change the subject, that is also going to be, a- and focusing stuff on the Supreme Court as a reason to reelect him, uh, all the ducks seemed lined up in the row, and this is an opportunity. Here is a clip of Ralph Northam. He is the governor of Virginia, of course, um, talking about, we played the clip uh, the other day from, um, uh, there was a, a Virginia lawmaker. She was being questioned on the law that they are, are pushing that um, it is legal this day to um, to provide uh, abortion services to a woman who is signed off by a doctor for medical reasons to receive an abortion as late as 40 weeks. Could be literally a day before um, uh, labor begins because um, if it is a threat to the mother's life, uh, and if it is a threat to the mother's health, and it is a function of the viability of the child. And here is um, Northam, and it was fascinating. I barely saw this, but um, he does this interview, and this was spun by the right as saying that Northam says it's okay to kill children after they, uh, to kill children who are born. Um, and... Here is uh, here is that interview, and then we'll talk more about. It. There are no exception. There was a very contentious committee hearing yesterday when Fairfax County Delegate Kathy Tran made her case for lifting restrictions on third trimester abortions as well as other restrictions now in place, and she was pressed by a Republican delegate about whether her bill would permit an abortion even as a woman is essentially dilating, ready to give birth, and she answered that it would permit an abortion at that stage. Of labor, do you support her measure and, and explain her answer? Yeah, and I'm, you know, I wasn't there, uh, Julie, and I, I certainly can't speak for uh, Delegate Tran. But um, I would tell you one uh, first thing I would say: is this is why decisions such as this should be made by providers, uh, physicians, uh, and uh, the uh, mothers uh, and fathers that that are involved. Um, There are, you know, when we talk about third trimester uh, abortions, these are done uh, with the consent uh, of obviously the the mother, with the consent uh, of the physicians, more than one physician, by the way. Um, And it's done in cases where there may be severe deformities, there may be a a fetus that's non-viable. So in this particular example, uh, if a mother is in labor, I can tell you exactly uh, what would happen. Um, The infant would be delivered. Uh, the infant would be kept comfortable. Uh, the infant would be resuscitated if, if that's what the uh, mother and the family desired. And then a discussion would ensue between the physicians and the mother. So, so I think this was really blown out of proportion. Uh, but again, we want the government not to be involved in these types of decisions. We want the decision to be made by uh, the, the mothers and their providers. And, and this is why Julie, that legislators, most of whom are men, by the way, shouldn't be telling a woman what she should and shouldn't be doing with her body. And do you think multiple physicians should have to weigh in as is currently required? She's trying to lift that requirement. Well, I think it's always good to get uh, a second opinion and for for at least two providers to be involved in that decision because these decisions shouldn't be taken lightly. And Mm -hmm. and so, you know, I I would certainly support more than one provider. All right. Let's uh, go back to now. Now. Of course, in some instances, there aren't more than one provider, right? I mean, if you're living in a rural area, uh, there aren't necessarily multiple doctors on call who are uh, who are working in uh, ob- obst- obst- obstetricians, uh, excuse me. Um, and so, uh, but the, this is very reminiscent of the Terry Schiavo thing. 
uh, because when you're talking about these children, uh, that uh, uh, if a child is born and the doctors know that this uh, child has no internal organs or, you know, is missing internal organs or has, you know, can survive perhaps for three or four days uh, in this instance, that's what we're talking about here um, in, in these instances. And this is very much like the Terry Schiavo situation, which I don't know if p- you guys remember. You but should refresh people. <laughs> Terry Schiavo was a woman who was in a vegetative state, and her uh, she had, uh, you know, before uh, entering into that state, she had a conversation with her husband uh, that he would pull the plug. Her parents did not want to, and um, the, the, the U.S. Senate was trying to get involved and uh, into this decision. Uh, because there were protesters out there, and it became this big uh, political football, and it was very successful for the Republicans. It was a very successful— Was it? No, it well, wasn't. ultimately, I think it was successful insofar as it, it, it was a way of rallying. They lost, but they, they lost this battle, but it was a way of rallying the evangelicals. Now, well, what year sure, that but, happen, they, but that was what? 2005. They lost the battle. Yeah, they lost, they the, lost midterms the midterms badly, right? very badly. And yeah. as well, they if you look at polls from that period, the vast majority of Americans said, "What? no, the Senate should not be involved I, in this I, I, issue. I agree. But I do think that it, it, it hardened their base. 2006 was, was not about uh, Terry Schiavo. It, it was it, for it, me. It <laughs> it was not about Shia. <laughs> Terry Shia and voted. and I think uh, abortion, she must die. <laughs> yes, <laughs> abortion abortion I think has a different resonance than than in that instance. Right, as an adult, you had the husband there. He came out, and um, I I I just can't help but think that at the very least, Trump is going to try and make this um, that type of well, thing. I think regardless of the you know direct comparison. You know, whether we go with it one way or another, I I mean, you're 100 percent right in terms of abortion is just the way of reaffirming, like you said earlier, the one thing that he has actually been he's absolutely kept his word on, which is I'm going to fill the court with the most extreme retrograde people imaginable. And I'm going to take, you know, an axe to everything, Um, obviously, you know, regulation on the corporate sector, first and foremost, but, but the whole evangelical agenda as well. And. If that is put back into the center of their minds uh, for his reelect, that bodes uh, better for him. I still think yeah. he's in pretty tough shape no matter what. Yeah, it goes back to that chart that you showed yesterday, right, right. Michael, about yeah. how most voters right. are uh, either socially liberal or socially conservative, but definitely not economically conservative. Right. And like people underestimate the degree to which Trump won on like this vague vague economic populism that he injected into his rhetoric combined with social conservatism and he could do it again i don't think he will but i think that that's the best play but i also don't ever take the the democrats could always snatch defeat from the jaws of victory so um we'll see i think he's going to talk about uh, abortion quite a bit and do you think he's been personally responsible for abortions? Oh yeah. I mean, if no, he's I ever if he's ever had sex. I don't think he's a provider. If hey. that's what you mean. <laughs> yeah. It's like my but, dad and I got into the provider business. Helped a lot of women. <laughs> okay, I, I'm gonna, I'm going to be an annoying SJW now, as I am most of the time, and remind everyone that it's not only women who can get pregnant and need abortions. I it's hard for me to remember too, but uh, gotta try. Okay. Um, fair enough. I don't know uh, Donald Trump's involvement in, in that there. but He's no. provided abortions in every single scenario. He was actually, that was his life's purpose. He was supposed to be an abortion provider, but he wanted to please his dad. Um, let's I mean, you know, he'll, he'll talk about abortion a lot, sure. And, uh, but at this point, I just don't think anything moves the needle anymore. No, You're not no. convincing anyone. No. And these, these socially conservative voters, these, you know, the hardcore evangelical types, uh, they're already a hundred percent going to vote for him. Like, that's it. There's, there's not going to be any dissension in those ranks. No, I, I mean, I, I, I am still firmly in the Martin O'Malley, uh, uh, uh can win a camp and uh and and i think it's a question though of uh, of how motivated these voters will be to come out that it's not a question of convincing anybody it's a question of turnout it seems to me 
They're and gonna turn out because they always turn out. They turned out in the in the midterms and they turned out big yep. for Republicans. Yep. So they're gonna turn out because one that's what they do. That's you know, a lot of them are just old people with nothing else to do. And uh, it's it's of course, you know, that's always what it comes down to. At the end of the day, oh, it's 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 the judges. You want the judges. I gave you two judges, but probably three by then. Right. That's going to be super scary. Uh, 